2008 MIT Energy Conference with this year's theme, Solutions at Scale to Meet the Energy Challenge. My name is James Schwartz, and I'm Managing Director of the conference. Thank you all for coming for what is sure to be an interesting day marked by collaborative learning and lively discussion around today's most important energy issues. We're excited that you are here today to be part of this experience. The conference is jointly organized by two student groups that work closely together, the MIT Energy Club and the Sloan Energy and Environment Club. I would first like to thank all the students that helped to organize this year's conference. Together, we are a team of over 70 people that were committed to making this a special event, which entailed long hours and tremendous dedication. It was truly the dream team of conference organizers. Being from New York, I would compare it to the 1998 Yankees, but some of my colleagues might prefer the 2004 Sox. The Energy Conference was started three years ago as a way to bring the community together, and that remains our central mission. The organizing effort for this year's conference started back in May, and since that time, the team has put in countless late nights fueled by pizza and a passion to create something meaningful. I believe I speak for the entire team when I say it has been well worth it, and I hope you will agree. Personally, it has been a privilege and an honor to work with this inspiring group of people. The organizing team would like to extend a special thank you to President Hockfield, the MIT Energy Initiative, and the MIT faculty for their tremendous support, not only for this event, but also for the range of student energy activities here at MIT throughout the year. Without their support, much of what we do simply would not be possible. I also want to thank our sponsors and partners, including this year's title sponsors, CIRA, BP, GE Energy, and Polaris Venture Partners, along with all the other organizations with ban banners hanging around this room and noted in your program. Their commitment in, term, uh, in terms of resources, time, and effort has been tremendous. We want to extend them our deepest gratitude. When we got together last spring to start planning this conference, the area of focus that stuck out in all our minds was the notion of achieving scale. The increase in oil prices and elevated concerns about climate change and security have precipitated a wealth of solutions from companies, government labs, and university researchers. However, we wanted to ask the question, so what? These were unquestionably interesting and potentially viable implementations of new technologies, policy mechanisms, and business models, but would they really make a difference in the time frame of five years, 15 years, our lifetime, our children's lifetime? While we were not in any way trying to pick winners, and much was left out of the program given that we only have a few hours together, we feel that today's excellent lineup of topics and speakers will address some of the most promising solutions to achieve scale and make a real difference in how the world produces and consumes energy. So we're thrilled to have you here today to join the community in this discussion and encourage you to ask, so what, how much, when, and the many other questions that will move us forward towards our common objectives. On a scheduling note, I would like to go over how the morning session will run. President Hockfield will first provide welcoming remarks, followed by a keynote address by John Doerr. John Doerr uh, Mr. Doerr will take questions at the beginning and the end of his talk. Once Mr. Doerr concludes, we will have a 15-minute networking break in this room with refreshments while the divider is rolled out. After the break, the first dual track sessions will be in at 9.30 a.m. It is now my distinct honor to introduce President of MIT, Dr. Susan Hockfield. Susan Hockfield has served as the 16th president of MIT since December 2004. A noted neuroscientist whose research has focused on the development of the brain, Dr. Hockfield is the first life scientist to lead MIT. She's a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and also serves as director of the General Electric Company, a trustee of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, and was recently elected to serve on the foundation board of the World Economic Forum. In President Hockfield's inaugural speech in May of 2005, she called for MIT to step up to the challenge of creating a sustainable energy future. She envisioned a coordinated, interdisciplinary approach to tackling this problem, which led to the formation of the MIT Energy Initiative. Her plan to work closely across MIT, drawing on all our strengths to create solutions that are greater than the sum of their parts, has served as an inspiration for the students to form a vibrant and engaged community around energy. Her continued leadership and support has been vital to our mission and we, the student community, are extremely grateful for that and honored by her presence here today. Ladies and gentlemen, President Susan Hockfield. Thank you, James. Um, as usual, uh, our students have managed to articulate the issues so clearly and so cogently, I hardly need to say anything. Um, it is really inspiring that um, our institutional commitment on energy has been magnified, enriched, and broadcast by the incredible creativity and determination of our students. Um, you know, I keep 
finally getting an update on the, the number of members of the MIT Energy Club. As I recall, the Energy Club was uh, born over a couple of years, you know, three and a half years ago, something like that. Um, it now has 700 members. And there are 18 other student groups that are focused on energy, sustainability, and the environment. <clears throat> this year together, they hosted about 161 events. Uh, as you can tell, lots of excitement, a lot of new ideas coming forward. So um, to James and his fellow members of the MIT Energy Club and the Sloan Energy Environment Club, I want to thank you for creating, in the short span of only three years, from essentially a standing start, one of the premier energy conferences in the nation. I want to welcome all of you here today. I want to thank the students for convening a group of exceptionally knowledgeable and forward-looking people. I also have to say, I, I want to thank our students for uh, giving the world an inkling of what MIT students are capable of. It's one of the reasons I have great optimism for uh, the energy future, because our students are invested in it so deeply with um, their incredible minds and their incredible ambition and incredible creativity. Now, um, it is a characteristic of this group of students uh, to um, cut to the heart of any matter they take up. And I believe that they've done so by choosing the challenge of scale as the subject of this conference. Um, I want to talk briefly about two challenges, of, two, two things. Uh, the first, the challenge of scale, and the second is MIT's role and the energy initiative's role in confronting it. As you all know far better than I do, uh, when it comes to energy, the great implacable reality is scale. In our public debates, scale is often the empty chair on the stage, <clears throat> yet for both the developed and the developing world, scale is the undeniable central issue, as James uh, laid out. Now, it's easy to get excited about new energy technologies. I certainly do. Um, I get excited when I talk to our students and faculty. Um, you know, the talk and projects around new batteries that have higher density, that are faster to charge and discharge, um, advances, advances in nuclear power uh, and those technologies, uh, new ways to tap sources like the sun, the wind, waves, tides, geothermal energy, and biomass and biofuels. Um, and on campus, there's a mounting, I think, appropriate enthusiasm around solar. Um, I always think about the uh, Willie Sutton line about banks. Uh, that's where the money is, and the sun is where the energy is. And there is, I think, appropriate enthusiasm and optimism around the challenges for solar of making the required radical improvements in the efficiency of solar conversion and of uh, energy storage. But no matter how ripe these new technologies might seem, at the present, most of them, frankly, wither in the face of the test of scale. And we are not going to solve the global energy challenge through boutique solutions. Scale is, um, I like to think, is the jolt of reality that can doom a clever idea to being nothing more than a dilettante's distraction. So what do we mean by scale? There are a lot of different ways to picture it, but let me offer uh, just one snapshot this morning. Simply to produce the energy we need, the average American unwittingly consumes 20 pounds of coal a day. 20 pounds, every one of us, every day. So that adds up in the United States to burning about a billion tons of coal a year. And at the present time, China is already burning twice as much. Now that's a problem of scale. And to extend this electricity snapshot of scale just a little bit, for the billions of people living in poverty, access to electricity simply to power a light bulb or recharge a cell phone would be the best thing that ever happened to them. But the growing consumption of energy with a trajectory toward Western levels of consumption may be the worst thing for the health of the planet. So if scale is the overarching question, how do we respond? Let me, ask, let me highlight three aspects of the scale problem where MIT's energy initiative uh, can make a particular difference. As James laid out, we launched the energy initiative a little over one and a half years ago. It has participation from all five of MIT schools. It brings together people from the School of Engineering with the School of Science, the School of Architecture and Planning, the MIT Sloan School of Management, and also our School of the Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences. So this is one of our, power, our greatest powers. We bring together in one place pretty nearly all the fields that matter in meeting the energy challenge. With the absolutely inspired leadership of Professors Ernie Moniz and Bob Armstrong, 
Uh, our energy initiative has really set the pace in technological research across a large set of fields. But it's also, importantly, fostering the conversation in fields like business, economics, political science, architecture, and urban planning. And importantly, it's bringing around this conversation and research between people working on technology and those working on policy. Frankly, at this point, I don't think any of us can know where the answers are going to come from. But uh, one of the things that encourages us is we see new people coming into the area every month. Uh, curiously, this year, when we asked our prospective freshmen uh, what they were interested in studying, as they've said for the last couple of years, um, most of them want to focus on biological engineering, but it had a slightly different tilt this year. Instead of thinking about biological engineering as a route to new biomedicines, they're now talking about biological engineering and its applications to energy. Our latest call for seed proposals for the energy initiative brought over 50 new proposals, new applications, and many from faculty who had not previously declared that they had a research interest in energy. The second place where MIT can help is we have a long tradition in working in three ways that you don't expect from most universities. First, of course, we work freely across disciplines. We also work almost instinctively with a global perspective. And perhaps most important of all, if we want to accelerate the implementation of new technologies, we have to work enthusiastically with industry, which is something that MIT is particularly good at. Already, we have 15 significant corporate partners for the Energy Initiative, and there are several more on the way. And of course, industry is not a monolith. There are a lot of different ways to divide the energy industry. But I often like to think about it as two groups. One group is the huge energy incumbents, the big energy producers and distributors. They already understand scale. The second group is the um, fresh-faced green tech market transformers. And we have to recognize, to get to real solutions, at MIT, we're going to work with both of them. And we're also going to help foster the conversation that's needed between them. Third and finally, MIT has a history of being an honest broker on complex subjects. In the energy world, the MIT nuclear and coal studies and the MIT-led geothermal study serve as important recent examples of this critical role. Plans are in place for a similar study on solar. Already, these studies coming out of MIT have helped shape the course of policy debates and funding decisions in Washington. Now, one of the big dangers of scale is that it can be simply so daunting that it leads us to a lack of focus, to a lack of progress, and perhaps to a lack of will and momentum. We simply don't have time for these kinds of slowing down. MIT can play a role in finding solutions by inventing transformational technologies that are going to define the bright, clean energy future. Also by dramatically enhancing the transitional technologies that are going to buy us time until we get to that bright energy future. And by working across science and engineering, policy and economics to lead the conversation and muster the necessary forces in time. <laughs>